Now, complete high school football coverage with John Apicello, Alyssa Ray, and Eric Johnson. This is 10 Sports First in 10. Sponsored by Glass & Associates, DeHart Tile, Shules, and Blue Ridge Towers. Week 10, first and 10, it's throwback right here in the house. Wow, so we're taking the movie quotes back as well as you look at all of us when we were oh so young and innocent. Does this look inanimate to you, punk? If I can move and I can talk, who's to say I can't do anything I want? On Friday nights, the staff pretty much does whatever they want. And the teams that can do the same will be gracing us with their presence in the playoffs shortly. With that in mind, we are blessed to have Jeff Williamson in our presence. He's got us up to the minute on the web, so if you're missing anything, check out First and Ten on the WSLS website. This week, it's about playoff positioning and the bracket racket it creates. In almost every case, you want to be safely in the top eight to punch your ticket to the postseason. Which brings us to our game of the week, the Class 4D bracket and the Class 5D bracket. And those are both highly contested, which is why tonight's collision was so important. Alyssa Ray has more from Patrick Henry. Both Pulaski County and Patrick Henry are on the verge of making it into the playoffs. In Region 4D, the Cougars are on the outside looking in at number 9, while in Region 5D, the Patriots are tied at 8th. With only two games remaining in the regular season, extra weight is put on this one. The Patriots band and cheerleaders entertaining a big home crowd. First quarter action after Pulaski County turnover. The Patriots take advantage. Grant Jennings hands off to Brandon Smith. He'll switch directions and takes it around the right side and in for the score. 14 0 PH. More from the home team. Tashawn Simpson with the rock brushes off a tackle, takes it three yards to the house to extend their lead 21 7. Cougars fighting to stay in this one. Cade Akers with the quarterback keeper from 26 yards out. He will not be denied. He brings it in to cut into the lead 31 14 PH. And the Patriots defense having some fun tonight. Leroy Thomas with the pick six as Patrick Henry goes on to win 38 14. Coach, how important is this win to getting more points for a playoff campaign? Oh, it's huge. You know, we beat a really good team tonight. And, you know, from what we were figuring up, it's probably, tonight we're probably worth about 42 points. So it's going to jump us up. And uh, I'm pretty sure we're in now. So we're excited about it. It was a great team effort, and we played well all night. As Coach Fiddler just said, the win tonight puts Patrick Henry in a very good position to lock in a top eight spot. As far as Pulaski County, next week's game against Salem is a must win. And even with the victory, no postseason is guaranteed. Appy. All right, Alyssa, back to that class four region D bracket and the Spartans more than their seed. Just want to keep the momentum rolling with another postseason run in the crosshairs tonight hosting Hidden Valley and it was Salem early and it was Salem often doing what they do. D'Angelo Ramsey bottled up left, kicks it right, and finds a seam, and he is gone, and Salem is up 7-0. More Salem running right. Viante Tucker, huge hole, and he is rambling to the zone for six more. Still first half. Watch Ramsey, favorite run here. Do you see the rivet and reverse pivot? And he is gone with the wheel and showtime deal. This one goes to Salem 45. Two, seven. Christiansburg at Cave Spring tonight. Let's take you to a cool evening at Bogle. Cave Spring taking the first score of the game. Dylan Robinson trucks in from seven yards out. Christiansburg going to make something happen. Jacob Knight throwing down the middle. Picked by Nicholas Cook right here. He takes it back very close to the goal line. Will he get in? Not quite. But eventually they would punch it in to tie the game, but this one goes to Cave Spring, 38-14. Amherst County had an opportunity tonight, playing the top seed in Class 3, that region C Heritage, to solidify their spot in that 4D bracket top eight. Or not, or not, because Heritage bringing it all tonight, showing love for their bus driver over many years, and then, yeah, uh, uh, Jabari Blake, 81-yard touchdown pass, Kevin Moss, 7-0 heritage in this one. Amherst going to battle back because Sean Turner, 29-yard connection to Kevin Chambers. We've got a 7-7 game, but heritage just keeps coming. 
Some guy named Elijah Davis. How many times have we called his name this year? Three yard touchdown run. Heritage blows past Amherst 61 to 27. EC Glass at LCA, another key game tonight. That is former LCA alum and former Hokie Dimitri Knowles attending. Glass's Drishon Kendrick, a seven yard run, but LCA with an early lead in this game by a score. And how about LCA's Eddie Ogle, four yard end round. He's got the need for speed to the corner and the pylon, 21-7. Glass hung in there, but LCA gets the win. 34 to 20, that is key for them in the playoff picture. Rustberg at JF in the second quarter. Caleb Smith gonna find the end zone, 34-14. Jefferson Forrest after the two point conversion. More JF will move to the third quarter. Caleb Smith having a big night. Cuts the corner, dives for the pylon, 42-14. JF after another two point conversion. Rustberg made it competitive, but this one 56 to 20. JF. The Bees at Liberty, and you know what? The Minutemen came out on a mission early and played well in this game. Aladdin Elromi, the sneak, the keep, 7 0 Liberty, and Liberty had a 14 0 lead. A little bit later on, it's Elromi again to the goal line, and he's in, but Brookville. Down 14-7 in the quarter, in the second quarter. Tanner Bernard scrambling. And look at him go. Look at him do what he needs to do. And he's got some wheels as well as that arm. 50 yards brought down at the 20. Brookville eventually Ryan North's gonna punch it in for the tying touchdown. And they go on to a 49-21 win. Mountain Empire scores for you before we hit the break. Galax with a statement game, putting up 75 tonight. Grayson County goes to five and four with a win. And Graham proving once again, they are a solid squad winning at Fort Chiswell. I think I need root canal. I definitely need a long, slow root canal. Trying to stop Larry Basham and the Terriers can feel a bit like that, I'm guessing. In Ridgeway, the Warriors tend to be a quick strike unit like pulling teeth, if you will, and at the home of the Celtics. It's a milestone evening, as the price has been right 100 times for Rono Catholic, plus this. We're the Floyd County Buffaloes, and you're watching First and Ten with John, Alyssa, and Eric. Football. With Stanton River running the table, the bird Botetot clash more about getting ready for the playoffs than a district decision. And there's no question the home team needed this one for the playoffs. Eric, both teams wanting to get ready for the playoffs. Looks like bird has a few new ways to showcase their main man and LB probably just wants to get healthy. That's exactly right. We can agree that this isn't the same LB team we've been accustomed to seeing early on throughout this season and not, uh, needless to say they are on the heels of Stanton River in their region just hoping to land a nice seat for the postseason but there's no question that region 4D that we talked about last block is the most tightly contested region in the land and even with only one loss coming into tonight William Byrd sits at just the number seven spot LB calling out the Terriers early and they showed up after not playing last week, check out Larry Basham off the muddle huddle back in a big way. On a fourth and nine, takes the direct snap, cuts his way to the end zone. Seven nothing bird ensuing drive. Check out Hunter Metter with the interception. He's going to take this one back to the house with a score. Terriers up 14 to nothing and led 28 to seven at the break. But the Cavaliers put up a fight. Evan Eller coming up with a nice interception here in LB with cash a check later and somebody let Uncle Ben in the kitchen because yeah, we're cooking with some rice right now. Hunter Rice finds a scene 79 yards to the promised land. But William Byrd came out just a bit too sharp tonight. TJ Johnson check him out here with the one nice one handed catch there and Larry Basham had multiple scores tonight. Terriers win 42 to 14. 
over Lord Botetourt. And another nice performance, not the performance, I should say, that uh, Lord Botetourt was looking to have tonight, but they are still in a favorable spot heading into next week. Hopefully they can simply get healthy at this point in the coming days and weeks and return to the team we're used to seeing. As for William Byrd, that was a much needed win tonight in the race for the postseason with Amherst and EC Glass both losing. The Terriers are sure to make some ground in Region 4D and stay within the top eight. They will face a Northside team that's a certain to give them a challenge next week. Happy. All right, we've got more Blue Ridge. The district champs are the Golden, Golden Eagles outright with a win tonight. A perfect finish in the district. The Golden Eagles running that single wig, and it's Caleb Jones, 36 yards, gallop and go. And it was an early Stanton River lead over William Fleming. More Jones scoring from 20 yards out. Two point conversion good, 14 0 River. And how about TJ Tester, 77 yards. Stanton River, 58 to nothing. Or your Blue Ridge District champs. To Magna Vista, where visiting Halifax County was one spot in front of Patrick Henry coming in. But of course, they had the Warriors to contend with tonight. This is a tough physical game. Magna Vista, yeah, putting the spear down and let's get started. Magna Vista punting early, but Halifax, not a mistake you want to make on the road. Recovered by Magna Vista, they are in business. And they'd cash in. Akira Greenfield, the big fella, keeps it power right up the middle. 7-0 Warriors. Moving on, Halifax going to respond. Their own power running game. Herbert Brooks is in. 7-6 Magna Vista after the two-point conversion. They would go on to a 14-6 victory key for them. GW Danville at Bassett tonight in a Piedmont rivalry. GW first on the board. Curtis Waller is in. 7-0 early. Bassett going to throw it long. Watch here as it bounces off the Eagles defender, but Christian easily makes the catch. The Eagles though, Kevin Smith rushes in for the touchdown. There you go, but that's the only score they would see. How about 70 to seven, your final G-Dub over Bassett. Tunstall is a winner 48-7 over Patrick County. Rono Catholic hoping to keep the undefeated run alive tonight and as a bonus, give coach Bob Price his 100th win as head coach. Here we go, picking up third quarter, Micah English, eight yard touchdown, scamper and score 38-6 over Blessed Sacrament. Later on, the Celtics increase their lead. Another Micah English touchdown, 46 to six. As you can see, Blessed Sacrament never gave up. Jack Lyons catching the floater here. Nice catch for the touchdown in traffic, but Coach Price notches his 100th win as the head man of the Celtics. Here's Coach getting his plaque. He was honored tonight. It was a big night for Rono Cal. It's awesome and I feel blessed to be a part of a great school and I feel blessed to have participated for the last years and uh, hopefully be able to make a difference in some of these guys' lives. It's All right, North Cross plays Saturday, uh, that game 2 p.m. I won't be singing Feed Me Seymour, but I will tell you we're not talking about One Hungry Plant here. We're talking about World Conquest. In our control room, Ryan is the ruler of all space, time, and dimension. It's his professionalism that I respect. And in Giles, the single wing was on display. You won't want to miss our special display on this game that hits close to home here at 10 News when we come back. Grand We've been talking playoffs all night. A list of the seven and eight seeds in class two and it's region C squared off tonight. Anytime two teams like this, they want to both get in. Yeah, and where these teams sit in those standings, of course, they're fighting to stay in that top eight. And for Martinsville and Dan River, it could go either way. But most importantly, Lugnut turns five tomorrow. Happy Lugnut. birthday, Lugnut. Happy Late birthday. second quarter. Bulldogs throw a 30 yard touchdown pass to EJ Bratcher. They take a 27-14 lead. Martinsville follows it up on the next possession. Quarterback Jordan Hundley scrambles for a receiver, but runs it in himself for the score. But Dan River answers with a pass to Bryson McLaughlin. Four hands on the ball, but the ref calls the touchdown good for the Wildcats. Dan River would score again with the pitch 
to Tyree Barton and his ensuing touchdown run, but Martinsville takes down Dan River 56-28. One loss William Campbell hosting number one seed in Region 3B Thomas Jefferson. Early first quarter, Josh Rosser caps off the Generals' first drive with the quarterback keeper from five yards out. PAT no good. Next drive for William Campbell. Rosser with some fancy footwork, and he hauls it 12 yards for the touchdown and a 12-point lead. Thomas Jefferson responds with a big pass to put the Vikings inside the five. Two plays later, Jalen Jackson gets the Vikings on the board. That was the beginning of a major Thomas Jefferson comeback. They'd win 62-34. And some area scores tonight. Appomattox rolls over Colonial Heights and Chatham falls to Alta Vista 33-18. We have a special matchup tonight in Giles because it hits close to home. Our own Lindsay Ward hails from Allegheny where she was a cheerleader. As you can see, that's her up there. And our own Rachel Lucas, a Giles grad cheerleader, wore a crown on homecoming as the princess. That's her right over there. Big one tonight in the 10 newsroom. Who's going to prevail? Let's get you out. Senior night at Giles, Ryan Beidelman. And he's in for the touchdown 7-0. Allegheny's going to respond. Zach Humphreys, yeah, uh, 16 yards. We've got a 7-7 game. But eventually, you can never have too much of the player of the week. Ryan Beidelman for the touchdown. Spartans win this one 49 to 16. Here he comes for the score. Spartans win. So it's a victory for Miss Lucas tonight. James River at Floyd County, the Buffs. Winford Bills troops going to get it going early. Pitch to Presley Yates for the corner and the cutback. And he would eventually need a quarterback sneak from Ian Barry for the touchdown. This one continued to be Floyd County all night long. 45 to nothing was your final. Radford 24 7 over Carroll County tonight. Pioneer District scores. Perry McClure is a winner, as was Narrows as they continue to roll. And Covington over Craig 44 to 19. Couple of notes for you. Houston currently leading 5-3 in game three of the World Series. Boston College is handling FSU 28-3. Roanoke on the ice, 5-4 over Macon in overtime. So a good one. Twas a fine show indeed. Guess what? We're back next week for week 11. I'll see you next week.